Alright, so welcome back. So I've been making a few videos about some mid text lately, but consider that a test run. I'm still pretty new at this whole YouTube thing, as you can probably tell. But the intent at least was for this channel to be mostly dedicated to customs. That's where the passion's at, that's where my collection has ended up over the years, and that's kind of where I want to take things. There aren't enough people out there doing full reviews on customs. Now that's out of the way, uh, I'm sure you're here to see a knife and not to hear me ramble. So this one right here is the Unit Knives Assassin. So just a quick size comparison for you. Here it is up against a Strider SMF and a Strider SNG. So as you can probably tell, it's a lot, it's actually a lot bigger than the SNG and blade wise, it's about the same as the SMF. Handle wise, it's quite a bit bigger. So this one isn't exactly a small knife. So a quick note about the maker, Yoon's the name of the guy behind it all. Uh, he runs Yuna Knives, uh, and it's a one-man shop out of Thailand where he fully hand makes customs. And by that I mean there's no smart machinery involved at all. There's no CNC, there's no wire jet, there's no wire EDM or anything like that. Uh, he doesn't have his parts shipped out, he doesn't have anything done outside the shop. So everything you see is hand shaped, hand assembled, and hand finished by the man himself. Blade on this one is hand ground as well, and it's actually in his favorite steel, or at least his favorite steel combo. So this one is in ZDP clad in ATS-34. ATS-34 is softer, but more, stain but more stainless and less prone to breakage. That means you get a stronger blade overall, and it still has the benefits of ZDP. That means it has um, an edge with top of the line edge retention, high HRC, all the good stuff. So if you look closely, you can actually see a transition between the two steels right there. There's quite a big difference in hardness, so they take the finishing differently. So if you see, there's a different shine to them. You can even you can even see it on the spine if I'm able to show it. Okay, you're gonna have to take my word for it. You can see it in person. But uh, anyways, the blade itself is insane. It's shaped like this crazy recurved tanto, and it has a complex grind to it. If you haven't seen already. So it has a hollow grind on this recurve part right here, and, to, and towards the front it transitions to a thicker flat grind closer to a point. Now I know a lot of people out there don't like recurves, and I get why, it's harder to sharpen and stuff like that, but I actually really like them. Uh, it's not just for looks either, I think it helps draw in the material and makes the knife a much more aggressive cutter when you go to use it. So Yoon's known for two things in the custom world. He's known for his weird designs and for the edges that he puts on his knives, and he put a hell of an edge on this one. So to make the edge, he brought everything down to a high polish convex edge. If that sounds familiar, like high polish convex grind on ZDP, that's exactly what Rockstead does. It's a pretty big comparison to make, but the knives I've had from Yoon, they've been at least as sharp as Rockstead's. It's not a full on mirror polish, but he does put a very nice hand satin on his knives by default. You have a more machine-like satin over here, or machine-looking satin over here. For a front flat round part, you get, uh, it's more of a coarse grit satin. Uh, and these two parts right here are more polished, but you can still see the lines on this one. While on this one, it's almost in, it's almost polished. So about that part right here, it's just this little hollow ground accent at the top. To split up uh, the three grinds. So I think it's unique. It's I haven't seen another maker do it and it just kind of makes it his own grind. It doesn't really serve a purpose as far as I can tell, but I do like that it's there. So moving back to a frame, you see it has Yoon's signature yin yang pivot. Same thing on both sides. So all his folders use this pivot as far as I can tell and uh, it's custom hardware, but you can actually take it apart if you have the right size spanner bit. It needs to be the ones with the rounded edges though, it's actually more of a snake eye bit, but some spanners fit it. It's a free spinning pivot, but at least it's tooled on both sides, so it's not going to drive you crazy when you actually go to take the thing apart. So with custom hardware, so with custom hardware, I always say that if you're going to use a custom pivot or custom screws, either send it out perfect or give me a tool to adjust it. This one has been holding up all right, so I'm not going to be too hard on it. So moving on to a front scale. So this one isn't anything too exotic. It's just some black G10 and some orange G10 put together. But the way he pulled it off is pretty impressive. So a transition between the two types of G10, 
it's pretty much perfect. I can't feel a seam at all. Even if I run my nail against it, nothing. And this isn't easy to do either. It's curved kind of like, uh, I think he's kind of trying to mimic the yin yang thing right here, where you get the curved line in the middle. So you get a curved transition between the two materials. Yeah, it's hard enough to get a straight transition right. I can't imagine what it took to get this one down. So the fin finish is pretty much perfect on the scale. Uh, it's not quite as perfect, not, not entirely seamless on the other parts of the knife, but I think it's still pretty good. A way that I like to check is you try and pass light through the side. See how you can't see any gaps in between the scale and the liner, the backspacer, and uh, the lock side? To me, that's always a sign of quality. So on the other side, you see this is just a normal frame lock. It's titanium. Uh, the titanium on this one has been uh, blasted and flame striped. Kind of reminiscent of a Strider almost, uh, but that, but it's kind of different. It's a different pattern. It's a little bit wider, and um, it's the same on the clip and the over travel stop as well. So on the other side, you see that this one's just a normal titanium frame lock. Uh, the tie on this one has been treated, so it's been uh, blasted and flame striped. Kind of like a strider, but the, pi but the pattern is a little bit wider, so it's a little bit different. The blasting gives you a bit of grip on it, but you'll see snail trails eventually. There's some on the clip, but they don't tend to show up very well on camera, so you can at least see how it wears. Uh, so it's finished as- I'm gonna close this up so I don't cut myself open, but... It's finished the exact same way on the clip and on the over travel stop as well. So Yoon has his own way of doing an over travel stop. He doesn't use the normal hinder lock bar stabilizer where you have a disc right here that's screwed into a frame. He uses this little piece of material. It's not always titanium, but it's titanium on this one. And he sandwiches it right here um, using the pivot. So what that does is it covers this corner of the lock bar. So the lock bar will hit that one before it's allowed to overextend. So the clip on this one is just a normal bent spring clip. It has relatively light tension, but the knife's pretty big. It hangs about right over here in pocket. And it works pretty well as a clip. It has a three dot pattern on the side and each one is anodized to a different color. So I would have preferred a mill titanium clip, but I'll get into why just a little bit later. Backspacer on this one is black G10 and you can see some file work on there. But then again, you can kind of argue that everything on the knife, every all the jimping that you see is all file work because if you see his work in progress photos, you'll see a thing in a vise clamped down. He'll take some files to it and he'll hand cut each and every one of the jimps that you see. It, there's a lot of it on the knife as well, jimping all around. It's all purpose, purposefully placed, so you can imagine how much work went to actually just cutting those. So it's everywhere it needs to be. Uh, you feel it in hand, but it's not too aggressive. With the way the thing is shaped, you don't really need actually need the jimping, but it does add an extra little something. It's like a add some tactility in hand. Now I can't really talk about ergonomics without going into a guy's overall design philosophy here. So if you haven't noticed by now, this is a bit of a strange night. There are toils and indents all throughout everywhere you look and you won't find a straight line anywhere on the outside silhouette of this knife and the fact that I like it so much kind of reflects back on me so I'm not a big fan of neutral handles they just don't really do it for me when I get one in hand it just kind of feels like the maker didn't really try at all to do anything um, out of the ordinary so now with Yoon I respect this guy because he takes the polar opposite approach to ergonomics this is someone that really isn't playing it safe. So all throughout the frame, everything is shaped and each and every choil you see is actually functional and shaped to fit your hand. So like in a normal grip right here, your thumb has a place to land. Your first two fingers are in complete choils and your back two are kind of in this part right here. If you choke up onto a blade choil, same thing, everything has a place to rest even this part of your palm right here, where it kind of swells out a little bit, that rests right there. If you choke back, there's jimping right here. For you, 
for your thumb to push up against. You got like sort of a pistol grip over here. But yeah. Everything has everything has its place and it's all comfortable. No matter how you hold it, either choked up or choked down, doesn't really matter. Locks your hand in place and the other thing I appreciate is that there's just zero dead space on this knife. And what I mean by that is there's no wasted space. Everything is either handle grip area or it's cutting edge. There's no like, there's no place where you just wonder if it's like whether a sharpening choil or a finger choil. No, this one's a dedicated finger choil. And I always like that. You can get right up against the edge and it feels comfortable and safe the entire way. The only real complaint I have about the ergonomics and just the handle itself is actually the clip. So with like a, so with a mil titanium clip, you usually get like a piece of material that's kind of straight, right there. With this one, depending on how you bend it, you can get this little ramp right here. Uh, so a ramp's great for getting in, into pocket, but it creates a hot spot. This part just comes up a bit too much. It's not a huge deal in this knife, but in some grips, I find myself adjusting for it. Like, especially right here. I kind of feel it poking into me, so I need to move my finger a little bit to kind of make room for it. It's not perfect, but easy to fix. So I don't know why more makers don't go for like an Emerson style clip, like something, actually I have one right here. Yeah, something like this where it's kind of bent out and forward parallel to a frame at the end. I think that's just a better approach to do things because you just get rid of a potential hot spot right here. With these, you kind of need to place them the right way or else you get them poking into your hand. But um, yeah, that, that's besides the point. I'm going off on a tangent here. So yeah, the other issue is when I grip it, you feel the lock bar moving farther and farther in. Let me see if I can show it. You can actually hear it too. It makes that annoying sound right there. Yeah, that's the lock bar moving. Uh, that's lock bar moving from about over here to over here. It stops at around 50%, but it just makes it much more annoying to unlock. You have to put more pressure behind it, and it's just more work. It also makes the knife just feel less solid in hand. I don't like, I don't like a handle that feels like it moves. So I don't like moving clips. I don't like moving lock bars in hand. It just doesn't feel solid to me. Might be more of a mental thing. Might not really matter. But the bigger problem is, to me at least, is actually the creaking sound that you hear. It's pretty annoying, and honestly, on a knife at this price, it just shouldn't be there. To me, it just tells me that tolerances on this one just aren't perfect. And it makes it feel like it's flimsy, even though I'm pretty sure it's not. It just gives it a cheap feeling. But with that out of the way, I have to say, lockup's pretty good. There's zero up and down play, there's zero side to side. When it's locked, it's 100% solid. When it's unlocked, though, you get a little bit of side to side play, but it doesn't really matter, it just tells me that the tolerances aren't quite perfect. Okay, so moving on. Next thing I want to touch on is this little part of the tang that sticks up right there. It's where a flipper would be, but it's not actually a flipper. You can use it to pop the blade past the detent, but I think that's about it. It'll stop about halfway. You can open it with some wrist, but it's not really meant to be deployed that way. It's mostly a thumb stud opener. So what that little part actually does is it helps complete these front two finger choils right here. So when you have it in a normal grip, your finger just kind of rests up against that one right there. And when you choke up, it gives you something to pull back on when you make a cut. Also, when you close it, you can see that this part hits your thumb first before the blade does. So you don't have to worry about it cutting you. So it basically does everything a flipper does except pop the blade out. So this thing is basically designed to be exclusively a thumb stud opener. And I'd say it works pretty well. It runs on Teflon as far as I can tell, but it has this kind of hydraulic smoothness to it. I can't really show it on camera, but I hope this gets you a, gives you a sense of it. Uh, so it's not, so it won't exactly drop shut on its own, but it will kind of stay where you put it. You have to shake it to actually get it to fall all the way shut. 
so the knife has a fairly light detent, but everything's positioned well for flicking it out. Uh, thumb studs are oversized and they give you pretty good grip. It's actually more natural for me to flick it out rather than actually thumbing it out. Just because of the way everything's positioned, it's just a little bit more natural. So yeah, like I said, um, thumb studs are oversized. They have this fill focus. Come on. Yeah. It has these steps up on the top that really grab your thumb, so you're not going to be slipping off of that one easily. And when they're open, they double as the op as open stop pins. They rest against the edge of the frame, and they just kind of do what a normal internal stop pin would. So I always prefer this kind of setup because any lateral force goes directly into a frame. It just seems like a stronger way of doing things. Centering on this one is dead on, and I think that's important to notice because not all Yunas are like that. Could just be a symptom of the somewhat small washers that he uses and the side-to-side -side play when it's unlocked, but all I can really say is he's had some trouble with fit and finish in the past, so not all Yunas actually come as well-centered as this one. This one's an earlier uh, build, so it's kind of still made during the period of time when, he, when his quality was still up there. Uh, a bit after Skelton made his videos, the guy's popularity basically exploded. He got a little bit sloppy to get knives out the door, and yeah, there was a short period of time where things were things were just things left his shop that really shouldn't have left his shop. I'll put it that way. But um, at least right now, I think things have settled down. His quality is coming back up. I got a much more recent Yuna, and all I can say is it's as good, it's at least as good, if not better, than this one. So that's always a good sign. But yeah, just keep that in mind when you're looking to get one on secondary, and just ask the right questions. Make sure you don't get screwed, and make sure you don't get a lemon. Uh, he'll be happy to fix the issues for you, but you would have to ship it all the way to Thailand for him. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, I had to ship one back a while a while back, but he didn't charge me for a repair itself. But he did ask me to cover shipping both ways, and that was around a hundred dollars. So. Yeah, that adds up pretty fast if you're having him fix up knives for you. But yeah, other than that, if you can get your hands on one, I'd recommend it if you like the design. It's not going to be for everyone, but whether it's right for you, you basically already know that. The, uh, the design isn't for everyone, and you either think it's the coolest thing out there, or you took one look and you said, this one's not for me. And I guess that's part of the appeal, actually. He's He isn't playing it safe, not by a long shot. Yoon's a hell of a designer, and the stuff he puts out is completely unlike anyone else's. You're not gonna find it, see some, see a Yuna out there and think that anyone else made it. So they're not exactly easy to come by either. So getting one will set you back over a thousand easily on the secondary market, and even more from the maker. His maker price is a bit high in my opinion, but you are getting a fully handmade piece with a stupid sharp edge on it. And the other thing is, the man's just a mad scientist when it comes to ergonomics. So that's all I have for you on this one. Um, I'll just finish it off with a bit of a close-up. Give you one last look at the knife. Alright, take care.